Enough about me. Yeah, heck, heck of a game. I'm, I'm proud of the guys, and I've said that to them a lot. I'm proud of the way you played. But I'm also happy for them because they've earned a couple hours of a smile and an enjoyable evening after what we have gone through. The last six days were as difficult on student athletes as, as anything I've ever really been through as a coach. And I'm, I'm sure there's worse things that teams have had to deal with, but not being able to get to your series on time and spending six or seven hours waiting to try to do that, to have to come back here at 6.30 in the morning, bus essentially what turned out to be into a into a tornado and then you finally get out of the get out of here and you get to the game a couple hours before and you don't play well. Now the guy on the mound pitched his tail off, but I'm not gonna go through this again. You got you guys know what happened and we did not really perform well but we did today and you scatter he scattered a lot of hits but it wasn't damaging so he evaded it. He had some key punch outs Jamie so did Ox, but Jamie had some key strikeouts. The three-six-one double play, probably the pivotal defensive moment. Cam made some nice plays. Lodis, nice double play, nice dive at the at the little line drive. Ferro played well. Um, Tibbs, some nice plays in the outfield. Can too. So the defense helped support, which clearly was a traffic jam for us all night. They're a really good offensive team. They put the ball in play. They two-strike hit. They run the bases. So when you can escape giving up that many hits, you're not going to if there's a lot of extra base hits mixed in. So the other side of it for us was really the extra base hit was the difference. And you can put some bigger numbers on the board when you have that opportunity, and we did today. Max is the double that kind of separated and, and helped us late there was big. Faroe's home run, Cam's home run, Lodisa's home run got us going. So there were some good at bats. I think the base on balls, mixed in there really helped. They threw a lot of good arms. Ferrer's walk, I believe that was in the bottom of the eighth. It got us going, Diamez went in there and ran, scored. And then Ferrer's walk kind of set up, maybe that was the seventh, I'm, I'm getting my innings mixed okay. up. Ferrer had a key walk in that situational baseball as well that allowed us to kind of extend and I think that's what gave Max a chance to to hit the double into the corner that, that separated. Ox was good. It's fun to watch a guy like that get here and quite frankly, hadn't had a lot of opportunities. And then the more he's taken the ball, he seemed to thrive. And he's a, he's a fun guy to have around. And he thinks the game, he knows the game, but you ultimately have to go perform. There's some people that think the game and know the game and don't go out and give you that. But I thought the punch outs looking were huge. I think he had one in the seventh when he came in, a big one, and also one in the eighth. Those are big moments, and the crowd's into it, and, and you get the, the K time going, and you get the punch out, especially looking. I thought those were pivotal pitches that he made. He did a good job. Both, both guys battled, but it was neat to see Ox come out of there with a, a lengthy, good performance. Scored three on solo homers, but that means five runs weren't homers. He manufactured a couple, including Tibbs tagging up from second to get to third and then scored on the bump. Yeah, no, that was really good. Like, that was a good base running play. And, you know, with with the arm that they had on the mound, it seemed like there were a lot of sliders that were probably in play for us. And I thought, you know, I haven't done that with Cantu, but I, I watch him do it in practice a lot. And he handles he handles a bat. So I think adding, did that get us our fifth? run I think to get it to five to two maybe just to to breathe and create some space I, I thought it was the right thing but they have to execute it and it was a good job of base running good lead and jump like you should have on that and um, you know that that did help and then the at bat sometimes just the wild pitch and some of the things that go into this and I think you get more of that when you have a lineup that has some lefties and righties and a mixture so you're not throwing to eight of the same thing in a row. I think you get more mistakes, and I think that was part of it today. Nice to see the uh, power production from the bottom of the lineup, Alex, and Drew feels like it's been a lot of the top line of guys lately doing that. Yeah, well, they've accumulated some, is that Lodisa's seventh yeah. home run, and Drew's fifth, five fifth. now? So to have guys down there that are that athletic and capable, I think 
it sometimes gets overshadowed by those guys in the middle that have clearly done so much damage that five, six, seven home runs doesn't seem like a big deal. Faroe's got 15, 16 doubles. I mean, those are those are significant statistics. And I know it hasn't come as consistent I mean, as we would like in some respects, but those guys are young and they're still learning and you see growth and you see development and you see them harnessing some of the things that you have to do to, to hit at a high level. It seems like in the seventh, Jamie, Jamie really wanted to stick in there and finish it out. And I know he didn't ultimately do that, but just how much have you seen him grow as a, as a competitor this year? A ton. A ton. And we saw glimpses of it his freshman year. Uh, the confidence, the stuff. We've talked about this in here. Which, which comes first, your confidence with what you're doing or when you start seeing the stuff you're running up there, you probably become more confident because you know you have some weaponry that allows you to chew through people when it's right. But he's worked in this weight room. He does his arm care stuff. Mike is with him. The advancement we've made with the pitching lab and the bullpen just gives them better training space. Phil and Jamie do a great job of circling the wagons on their health and strength. So you're seeing all aspects of the program give Jamie the best chance to be on top of his game. And you see it with some of the hitters too. And he's not the only pitcher that's benefited from that. But that's what you're trying to do when you're trying to upgrade what you're doing in the cages and the bullpens and the pitching lab and the technology and the track man and all of those things. You're trying to get them to unleash maybe more than they thought was in there. And he's doing it. It wouldn't be a Florida State baseball weekend without a doubleheader, it seems like, or something weird that goes on with the schedule. Um, how big is it with that in mind that you only use two pitchers tonight? Be the things that are going through my mind when I know we're about to go play 18 innings after what time is it? It's 10.30 right now. Until the time I get home, it'll be 11, 15, 30. And the guy, same thing. It changes things by a great stretch when you don't shoot through a lot of arms. you know. And we had, we had some guys on the verge of being hot to go into the game but they didn't have to go in there and jump in the trenches and fight today. So that helps. Those are long, 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 difficult days. And the pitchers, it's hard. It's also hard to stand out there. Like those guys are gonna be standing out there playing defense for 18 innings and running on and off the field. Um, my first baseman at Auburn ended up playing right field for the Marlins. I'm like, Coop, what's, what do you got on this? He's like, coach, the hardest thing is running to right field 18 times. Like I've never, never, the first base you run 10 steps. Like, so it, it's taxing on everybody. It's taxing on us mentally to stay ahead of things for that long. And it's, you know, the umpires have to, have to stand out there the whole time. So they're tough, but it's a part of the game and we're going to have to manage it best we can tomorrow, but not using a bunch of arms logs. On top of that, how big, I mean, having, it might be the first time all the double hitters, headers you've had recently where you won the first game, you kind of have a game in hand. How big is that going into the double header? Man, to walk out of here with a W today, like that team was on it, and you didn't feel like it was headed in the right direction in, in part. It seemed like we would do something positive, and then bang, 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 they answered. Like, is this one of those days where we're not going to get over the hump? And it was, but... Yeah, like just the comfort of being able to go take a shower knowing you're 1-0 in this thing, and you know what you're dealing with tomorrow. It's not going to be easy, but you'd much rather show up tomorrow 1-0 than 0-1, that's for sure. Do you know the order on the mound tomorrow when you're going to go with it? Dorsey, and then we'll, we'll just feel Dorsey will be two for sure, like he'll pitch the afternoon game? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, awesome. Yeah. Appreciate it. I don't know.